Hey friend, this is Jennifer, and this is the Jennifer Allwood Show, the podcast for women who want to learn how to live an intentional life or build their creative business. I'll be giving you my very best business tips, bringing you interesting guests, giving you a daily dose of Jesus, and I'm committed to always keeping it real. Grab a cup of coffee and let's dive in. I'm so honored that you're here. Hey friends, welcome back to the podcast. This is podcast episode 17 of Monday Fire. Just a little short episode for you on Mondays. Try to get your week to start out right and to give you just a little quick teaching that hopefully can be valuable to you in both your life and your business. I love it when people are like, I'm not even in business and I follow you. And I'm like, yes, girl, thank you for that. So I want to talk to you this week about something that really triggered me last week. By the way, don't you love the word triggered? Are there ever any words that you're just like, I need to find more opportunities to use that word in a sentence. Triggered is one of those for me. Cause I'm like, that's a, just, it's just a good word. It is a good word. Like there's no other word that kind of means what triggered does. And so when I first heard that word, I'm like, yes, I totally get what that word means. So I got triggered by something on my Facebook page in the last couple of weeks and wanted to share it with you because I had to relearn a lesson that I've had to learn a hundred times. And some of you might be in the middle of needing to learn this lesson also. And I think that this could be valuable to you. So um, I wanted to talk to you today about what to do when someone says something to you that you just feel is nasty. And probably from their point of view, it wasn't nasty. They weren't, they weren't trying to hurt your feelings. They weren't trying to offend you. But As you know, especially on the interwebs, sometimes people can get behind a keyboard and they can type things that perhaps they would never say to your face. And case in point, what I'm about to tell you. So there was what I'm sure is a precious woman who messaged, or I'm sorry, she did not message me. She commented on my social media last week. And I'm going to read to you the comments that I make sure and not paraphrase. But as a lot of you know, I have really worked very hard in the last six, eight months. Well, it started back in February to try to regain some control of my health. I had become pre-diabetic. Again, I was up about 30 pounds, which I was blaming on uh, menopause and emotional eating. (laughs) Um, And my blood pressure was high. My cholesterol was high. Everything was high. And so I have taken a lot of steps since February to really get some control over my diet, get some control over my weight, get some control over my exercise, um, try to rein everything back in and and regain um, some level of fitness. So anywho, I've lost in the process since February, like 25 pounds. Sometimes it's 24, sometimes it's 27. I'm not a slave to the scale, so I'm not really watching it that close. But needless to say, I have worked really hard on eating. I've worked really hard on like getting blood work done, taking appropriate supplements, trying to get my hormone levels back out of the gutter. I've worked really hard on lowering my carbs, upping my protein. You guys see me on my Instagram stories working out. If you didn't see the hundred pushups I did the other day, that was lame. So don't go watch it. But anyhow, in my mind, I know that I've worked really hard since February. So that's why I was triggered by this comment. So the other day, a precious woman commented on my social media and she said, Hey, there were some ladies in a social media group saying that your Facebook break, because I recently took a two week sabbatical off of social media to finish writing my book. And your host to help your hotel stay was because you had lap band surgery, not because of your book. Please tell me this isn't so. And I'm like, what? So in my head, like people actually like are talking about me on the internet. And then somebody said, you know, why would you even bring that up to her? And the woman who is very precious again said it was a really big discussion. I'm just hoping it's not true um, because she'd had a friend that went through lap band surgery. And so I just happened, nobody like screenshotted it and sent it to me. Let me just say that first of all. I just happened to like stumble across her comment. And first of all, if she's listening to this podcast, I want you to know this podcast has nothing to do with you and everything to do with me. And I want you to know that you and I are good girl. I know that your heart was in the right place. And so please hear me when I say this episode is not about the comment, commentor. (laughs) This is about me who was reading the comment because... As soon as I read that, I felt that like feeling of like all the blood rushing to my head. I felt like that red all over feeling. I felt that like, are you freaking kidding me? Like my first reaction when I read that was 100% flesh. No Jesus at all. 100% flesh. Because my first thought was, I am so mad by that. I can't believe that people would have the audacity to be discussing me on the internet. Why are people discussing me on the internet? Don't they have better things to talk about? I've worked so hard. My initial response was, I want to defend myself right now. 
I want to like be validated. I want to like tell my BFFs, can you believe this is, you know, people are saying this on our internet. And so I need for you to know, I took the bait. I took the bait and I know better than taking the bait. I know better than coming back and responding in, you know, 30 seconds of reading that. I know better, but I had a BFF, a big fat fail. So I commented back and I was like, are you stinking kidding me? What I felt like, you know, in retrospect was that, Uh, Well, there was a lot of things. Okay. I woke up the next day and I'm like, dang it. I took the bait. I shouldn't even have commented to her. I'm sure that I came out snarky. You know, I'm sure I came out with my claws out and that's no way to respond to a stranger on the internet, regardless of what she put. So I wish that I had really slept on it overnight. Um, I was reminded, you know, within 24 hours about how good of a vindicator God is. And by the way, if you don't know what I mean by that, it just means that you don't need to always defend yourself. He's like your best judge and jury. And so if you just like type into the Googles, which I did before this episode, so I could say something accurate, there are, I believe, 21 scriptures that have to do with God being a good vindicator, if you want to look that up. Bible scriptures on God being a vindicator. So what I was, I think, upset about is number one, I felt like it was um, an, an attack on my character because what I felt like I was reading between the lines was that people were thinking that I was lying. And that I was saying I was doing a book, but I was actually having lap band surgery. There's nothing wrong in and of itself with lap band surgery, which by the way, I did not have. But then I felt like embarrassed almost. I'm just being completely vulnerable with you because somebody on the other end of this needs to hear it. And somebody's going to get something from this. And I just want to give you a big hug. I felt embarrassed because in my mind, I'm like, they only do lap band surgery if people, you know, are... I think the the rule of thumb is usually a hundred pounds overweight. I could be wrong on that. I'm not a doctor. But so then in my head, I'm like, did it really look like I was a hundred pounds overweight? The doctor wanted me to lose 25 to 30 pounds, which I've done. I feel very healthy. And so what it took me back to is like this middle school girl who people were talking about, who didn't feel good enough, who felt already chunky and chubby. And by the way, I never was. And, and I was shocked at how triggered I felt by a comment on the internet. So here's what I know to be true. Because I got triggered and because some of you have recently had, maybe you haven't been accused of having lap band surgery. Maybe you had a bad review on your Facebook page about a piece of furniture that you've painted. Maybe your mother-in-law said something snarky to you about the way that you parent. You don't have to have a business to get this. When you feel like people are being critical of you or when you know that you're being discussed, isn't it interesting how it can trigger in us um, emotions that still reveal to us areas of growth that are still needed? So I'm going to share with you those areas of growth. Clearly, I still get have to get over even more than what I have, my people-pleasing tendencies and my being concerned about what people are thinking of me because I should be mature enough to know when I read that comment that I don't need to respond to every negative thing said about me, number one. Um, Jesus didn't, by the way. And so you can look up lots of scriptures on engaging a fool in an argument. It's foolish. And not saying that that commenter was a fool, by the way, but just saying you have to understand that it has zero to do with the person making the comment and everything to do with something going on in the spiritual realm. Okay. It has, it is a, the Bible talks about how we are not fighting against flesh and blood. We are fighting in the spiritual. And so instinctively what happened in me is I got triggered. Clearly I still need to work on the areas where I'm worried about what people think of me. I was being triggered by the fact that I've had people discuss me openly online before and it's wounding. And I thought that I was past that and I believe that I still am. However, as soon as I saw that, I could go right back to there in a nanosecond and be like, holy crap, people are still talking about me online. What in the even heck, right? And so I still had to go back and be like, you know what, Lord, what you say about me is all that matters. I thought I was past that. Clearly I'm not. Please continue to help me get to a place where what people say about me does not wound me. And the third area of growth that I need to still work on is allowing things like this to distract me. This was just a, you know, a few days before our cart was being opened for the inner circle. This is in the middle of me writing a book. And I need for you to understand that when the mother-in-law says something, when you get the negative review on Facebook, so often it is simply there as a distraction. Because the I love this saying that if the enemy can't discourage you, he will do his best to distract you. So 
I want to share with you just an ending thought here. If you, if you're somebody that you understand getting a negative comment on social media, then you totally get this, but maybe you've been, you know, you've had a bad review on your Facebook page. Maybe you've had somebody comment that your furniture is ugly. Your mother-in-law is attacking your parenting style, all of the things. Okay. I need for you to remember as you lay your head down at night, that God is your good vindicator. You did not need to defend yourself. Number one, number two, you answer to him and him alone. And so if you can go to bed at night, knowing that all is well with your soul, then that is all that matters. And lastly, just a reminder to not take the bait, to not take the bait. The bait is how can I throw this comment out and reel in an argument? And I want you to remember, it's not worth it. It's so not worth it. You have bigger fish to fry. You have bigger things to focus on. I need you to get your eyes back on the things that actually matter because the time that I wasted, you know, even if it was just 20 minutes, that's 20 minutes of my life. I can never get back. That's 20 minutes of my life that I could have been spent, you know, in deep growth conversation with my husband. That's 20 minutes I could have been hugging on my kids or reading them a book. And instead I spent 20 minutes defending myself against lap bad and surgery on the internet. And I know better. So I just want to encourage you today because I guarantee that I guarantee that I guarantee that one of you is going to go to iTunes. You're going to leave me a review and you're going to say that is the episode exactly that I needed. Or I guarantee that you know somebody who right now is being baited by a comment on the internet or something her mother-in-law said or whatever. Would you forward this to her? Because I think when we understand the root of where these things come from and what we need to take from what happens and what we need to leave there. And what we need to just know that God will deal with and we don't even need to. It's so, so helpful in letting things go. So I hope that that's an encouragement to somebody today. As always, thank you guys for sharing this on Instagram. Literally this week, I can't keep up with the number of you who are sharing. You're sharing like the screenshot of the episode and you're saying things like Monday fire is fire. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you guys, thank you. Like literally from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. These Monday fires have been my absolute favorite to do. And you guys are my absolute favorite as my listeners. So until next week, be blessed. Bye-bye.